everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to break down week five from a DFS perspective. What's happening, Jim? I'm all good, Greg. I'd be a lot better if Sam Darnold didn't still have mono, so I guess we're tracking that and seeing how that goes. I would love to use Le'Veon Bell in my season-long leagues, but we're kind of just sitting here and hanging out and seeing how that goes. Uh, so I guess I'm better than Darnold. That's not saying a whole lot. How are you? I'm doing fine. I got Danny Dimes, man. Things are great. Yeah, it could be a lot worse there for sure. Getting Golden Tate back this week, that will certainly help matters. Uh, Vikings are tough, but not as tough as they used to be. So Danny Dimes could be a fun one to watch again on Sunday again. Hopefully not as fun as the Texans are against, Isla against Atlanta. As the Sean Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, and the crew have a very, very tasty matchup. That's where we begin our stacks for this week. Why do you like Watson and which wide receiver are you pairing him with? Yeah, we talked about this exact same stack of Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins last week, and it didn't exactly go too well, but I think it makes sense to run it back this week. I like Will Fuller, too. He's not the guy we're discussing here, but I think that he is very worthwhile coming off of a dud. Eventually, Deshaun Watson will hit him on a deep ball, and that'll lead to really good things. And it very well could be this week because the Falcons' defense got gashed last week by my guy Marcus Mariota. Uh, they don't really let Mariota do a whole lot, but that team was still able to move the ball quite a bit against this Atlanta defense with no Keanu Neal. And now they go on the road, and they're playing indoors again, which does not bode well for this defense. As far as Deshaun Watson goes, I would say this is the best matchup they've had all year and yeah I expect them to do well last week but that Panthers defense is legitimately pretty good I was there mostly based on the pace the pace should still be there but I think we get a boost in matchup here for Deshaun Watson and because they were a letdown last week we get them at a discount Deshaun Watson $8,000 on FanDuel for this week DeAndre Hopkins down to $8,500 and Hopkins still has 31% of the team's deep targets this year with 30% of the overall targets so the workload has still been there these guys are still really good. We just haven't seen them blow up since back in week one. I think that could happen once again this week. So I'm buying back into the Texans. I know last week stunk. It ruined a lot of my tournament teams that they did not do that well. But I think it now is a good time to get back in on them as they host a beaten up Atlanta team. The Atlanta defense has not looked right yet this season, just allowing a ton of points week in and week out. And I think the Texans are ready to blow up. And I think it's Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins pairing. It's going to work out well for us. And season long, People are ready to jump shit from DeAndre Hopkins. Don't do that, especially not this week. Jim, let's continue on, and let's get to Baltimore, where Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews have been an awesome combination throughout this season, and I expect this week will be no different. Yeah, I think one of the keys to attacking Pittsburgh is attacking guys, you then with guys who move into the slot, because we've seen it forever, essentially. You know, they struggle to cover guys who move around in the coverage. And it should be better now that Minka Fitzpatrick is there. But Fitzpatrick, I think, will more so help them covering in Marquise Brown. I think that Marquise Brown is still a guy that I'm going to use once again this weekend down at $5,400. And Mark Andrews is the safer guy to stack with Lamar Jackson because we've seen Andrews get those more intermediate and shorter targets, which is not something that uh, Hollywood Brown gets a, lot of, gets a lot of, which means that we're going to see a safer floor out of Mark Andrews. He has at least seven targets in each game despite playing limited snaps due to a foot injury he has still seen a lot of targets Tyler Eifert got some pretty good volume early in the Bengals game against the Steelers didn't finish very well but we all have also seen Andrews have a better role than Tyler Eifert so far this year and Andrews is not totally devoid of upside he doesn't get as many deep targets as Hollywood Brown but he does still have six targets at least 16 yards downfield this year he also gets some looks in the red zone, gets a lot of overall looks. So I think that if you're looking to stack with Lamar Jackson, Andrews is a safer piece for stacking at $6,100. I think that Brown will still be a good play at $5,400. Eventually, one of those deep balls will hit. And again, that's going to pay off really well, given how talented and fast Marquise Brown is. So I will still go there, but Andrews is definitely the higher floor guy to stack with Lamar Jackson. Jackson himself has been phenomenal so far this year. He is $8,300. I think that is a super fair salary to pay for him he's viable every week but I think against the Steelers defense that has still had some issues even without uh even with Minka Fitzpatrick being there I still can go at this Baltimore team so I want to go Lamar Jackson I think that Andrews is my preferred stacking guy but I will get some Hollywood Brown in there as well Hollywood Brown Lamar Jackson has been your lethal combination since week one 
don't know that's working, which is why you're going to Mark Andrews. I know you'll still sprinkle, like you said, with Brown. And Mark Andrews was well, been one of top 10 tight end all year long. And Lamar Jackson, after a rough couple of weeks, we expect him to get it back right this weekend against Pittsburgh. Speaking of Pittsburgh, they were able to defeat Cincinnati pretty handily on Monday night. But things should go a bit better for the Bengals this Sunday where they take on an Arizona defense that shouldn't even be called a defense. Pairing up Andy Dalton with Tyler Boyd makes a lot of sense because he barely has anybody else to throw to. Dalton and Boyd seems like a lock this week, Jim. Yeah, I think that with this Bengals team, you can look at that game against Pittsburgh, but it's a, a divisional team on the road on Monday night, a team that did just add Minka Fitzpatrick. You can kind of understand why they would struggle in that spot, but now they're back at home, and they are on short rest, but the Cardinals are traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast for a 1 o'clock game, and I think that that should have set up well for this Bengals offense. And yeah, they're banged up with no John Ross and that offensive line missing a bunch of pieces, but what that's going to do is funnel additional targets to Tyler Boyd, as you mentioned. He is just $6,700 for this week. He has 24% of the overall targets along with 24% of the D targets this year for Cincinnati. And both those numbers should go up with John Ross sidelined for this weekend. So Tyler Boyd is a cash game consideration at $6,700. And Dalton, probably not quite that high because this offense has struggled to function. But this is going to be the best spot they get the entire year at home against a pace-up offense that has a terrible defense with Patrick Peterson and Robert Alford still being out so I don't think we're going to get a better spot than this the entire year for Cincinnati so if you're ever going to use them it should be this weekend I think that the way this game sets up I see enough here where I will still use them despite the disappointment we saw back on Monday night I think that John that Joe Mixon is actually in play here too despite the fact he has not had the best usage so far this year he's been getting work in the passing game he's very cheap and he's facing a bad Cardinals team so Joe Mixon a viable guy here so is Auden Tate at $5,300 but I think if you want to go the the volume route and the safest route, the route we know the best, it's Andy Dalton paired with Tyler Boyd. I think it makes a lot of sense to go at both sides of this game. We'll talk about the other side in just one second, but the best stack to me within this game is going to be Dalton paired with his number one wide receiver. Absolutely. Against Arizona, pairing Tyler Boyd with Andy Dalton this week is another no-brainer. A lot of good stacks here this week. Also kind of crazy, all these games are at 1 o'clock, by the way, Jim. We were looking at that before. But Arizona is a defense that you can take advantage of. This week is with Andy Dalton and Tyler Boyd, both very, very fairly priced. Let's continue on, Jim, and let's, let's stay in the game. As Kyler Murray and David Johnson also make sense because Cincinnati's defense, well, not as porous as Arizona's, not good either. Yeah, if the Steelers were able to do what they did, given that they didn't throw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage more than like once the entire <laughs> night, I'm pretty sure Kyler Murray can move the ball here. And yeah, Kyler's had, you know, basically a similar style of attack the past two weeks where they haven't gone deep very often. We know that a deeper passing game is still within the range of outcomes. And I think that they could tap into that this week as they're facing a defensive line that is good. The Bengals defensive line is good, but the overall defense still not one you'd really fear, even with the Cardinals offense that is still trying to find its footing so far this year. As far as pairing Kyler Murray with David Johnson goes, we should see Johnson continue get, to get targets here with Christian Kirk banged up. And so far this year, in the games where Johnson has not gotten hurt, he has 22% of the team's targets this year. And if you use Kyler Murray paired with David Johnson, you're probably going to have access to every touchdown that the Cardinals score. And they could even score one together, as they did back in week one with a passing touchdown from Murray to Johnson. And you're getting that for just $6,800 in David Johnson. I think that he is a really solid running back play on this slate, still super underpriced compared to the role he has played thus far. As far as Kyler Murray goes, he has still had at least 16.36 Fanduel points in every game so far this year. This is easily the best matchup that they have had. These are both teams that want to throw the ball a ton, and that can lead to a lot of play volumes. I think that bodes well for both Andy Dalton and Kyler Murray. I think this is a great place to go for game stacks. There is the potential to disappoint because we don't have John Ross and potentially don't have Christian Kirk. So that is a certainly a red flag for both sides. And maybe we don't want to go too hard at this game. But if you're going to game stack here, you're going to get it for pretty cheap salaries on both sides. And I think that's attractive. So Kyler Murray, David Johnson, my favorite ways to get exposure to this team. And I think it's a pretty viable stack against this Bengals defense. Absolutely. I also am kind of tempted, by the way, even though Arizona's defense is awful, we kind of stack them in there, too, man. The eight sacks the Steelers had on Monday night are fresh in my mind, but maybe that's a little bit more crazy. Instead, let's go with Kyler Murray. Let's go with David Johnson. 
you said Christian Kirk maybe a little bit too much, but hey, I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair. Arizona and Cincinnati. There's not that many Cincinnati Bengals to choose from. With Arizona, we talk about this a lot. You know where the ball is going. Ava Johnson, the number one option for Kyler Murray. As we continue on, we get to the Patriots, where a lot of us, myself included, Jim, expected the Tom brady Julian Edelman game this past Sunday against Buffalo. It didn't happen. It was the Tom brady to James White game. But you're going back to the Edelman well here against Washington. How come Edelman over White and some of the other choices in New England? I think that White does make sense again because you've seen a lot of volume in the two games where you've had the same personnel setting. But you look back at that last game, and personally, I'm willing to throw it out because the Patriots were facing a Bills defense that is legit. So I think that you can kind of throw that game out both from an efficiency perspective and to an extent from a usage perspective. But even there, Edelman still had the usage. He had seven targets there. And in two games without Antonio Brown and with James White being in there, he has 25% of the team's overall targets in those two games. He has three deep targets, two in the red zone so getting some high leverage work as well I think that bodes well against a Washington defense that has been really bad so far this year that's why I like Edelman as far as Brady goes you could be concerned about the game script but when you look at the first three games the Patriots played this year they obliterated all three opponents and yet Brady still had 20 or more Fandle points in each of those games he is down to $7,500 and I think the reason his salary went down is because he disappointed but they were on the road in a divisional game against I would say a top five defense in the NFL I don't think we worry about that game. Now they're facing Washington. Washington's defense is atrocious and Brady should come through even if they do get out ahead here pretty early. So I think that it makes sense to go to Tom Brady here by low off of a bad week last week and get Edelman in their stack with him because Edelman has been the number one wide receiver in this personnel grouping so far this year. I think that Edelman will be my number one target, but White does make sense as well. Edelman or White, you probably can't go wrong. I guess you can go wrong. You want to get it right. James White, he makes sense. But for Jim, Julian Edelman, going to step up another week removed from that injury, should be healthy and ready to rock. And Tom Brady against a porous Washington secondary that Danny Dimes they will take advantage of. You got to like that matchup. One final stack to get to today, Jim, and that brings us to the Saints, where Alvin Kamara has been otherworldly since Drew Brees went down with the injury. It's been the Alvin Kamara show. But if we're going to stack Kamara with somebody, who's it going to be? I kind of dig the Saints defense here from a tournament perspective because last time we saw Jameis Winston, he was lighting up the Los Angeles Rams for 55 points on the road, which is awesome. And I love to see that. It's fun to see quarterbacks uh, who have fantasy assets tied to them doing really good things. And Jameis did that last week. But he still managed to throw a pick six in an awful situation because he is still Jameis Winston despite that. And now he's going on the road to face a Saints team in a pretty tough road environment in the Super Bowl, Superdome. We do talk a lot about, you know, a lot of shootouts being there, but this defense does play better there. It's a, a rowdy environment as well. And that can be tough for an offense to go to, especially when they have an offensive line that is as leaky as Tampa Bay. So I think this t- Saints defense could be in line for a good spot this week. They are only $4,000. That is a low dollar way to get exposure to what I think is a high upside defense. So I like the Saints defense. And as far as Kamara goes, like you said, he's had a good workload since Drew Brees went down, averaging 16.5 carries and 6.5 targets per game. In that Seattle game, Kamara set a new career high for snap rate, uh, the highest snap rate he's had in his entire career. So basically the Saints' plan without Drew Brees is to throw short and lean on their superstars. And both those things lend themselves to a lot of uses for Alvin Kamara. So I think it does make sense here. Now, I'm not expecting a lot of rushing efficiency out of Kamara because this Bucs rush defense has been really good so far this year, and Todd Bowles knows how to cook up a good rush defense. So I'm not expecting rushing efficiency But I do expect expect a lot of passing game work, and I care a lot more about that than what I do about a running back doing on the ground. So I think that Kamara, $8,200, one of my favorite running back plays on this slate, I think it does make sense to pair him with the Saints defense, given that people will be avoiding them after what Jameis did last week. Absolutely. It's a sneaky, sneaky play with the New Orleans Saints, given that Jameis went nuts last week against the Rams. Maybe the Rams were looking too far ahead to Thursday night football against Seattle. Nevertheless, you know what Alvin Kamara could do. You know that usage rate, and you know how the offense operates. Dink, dink, dink. All Alvin Kamara. Hopefully the Saints can do enough, keep that team, the Bucks in the game, so it's all Kamara all the time. We think this could be a close one, which means the Saints defense, certainly a team to consider. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. Jim, it's been a blast. It's been so much fun. Let's do it again tomorrow. 
Yeah, there are actually some pretty good value plays on this slate, too. So I'm looking forward to swinging back tomorrow and talking about them. Looking forward to it, Greg. Should be a whole lot of fun, and we'll talk to you then. Absolutely. Some undervalued players coming your way tomorrow. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Have a wonderful night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.